Hey friends, it's Sheree and today I'm going to be sharing with you all of the things that I made in the months of February and March. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> friends so as usual I like to start my videos by sharing some amazing companies that I discovered over the last couple of months and I cannot wait to share those things with you but before I share those things if you are someone who is here solely for the purpose of seeing the things that I made then you can definitely fast forward through this part of the video and I will put a timestamp so that you can do that but if you're interested in the things that I love and that I'm interested in, please do continue to watch. I won't take offense if you fast forward through this portion, but I do love to share the things that I'm enjoying. All right, so I'm trying something new today. Today I have my rolling rack, which was supposed to be added to my closet. However, I haven't shrink wrapped all of my, I say shrink wrap, but you guys, I use one of those um, vacuum seal bags to you know, shrink down all of my winter clothes. And I haven't done that yet. And I have quite a bit of a mess in my closet. So I haven't been able to incorporate this awesome rack <laughs> to my closet stuff yet. Um, and actually this might be kind of fun. So if you like this actual view of the actual clothing that I made, instead of me just inserting pictures only, then maybe I will just use this rack solely for this purpose instead of incorporating it with my closet, my regular things that I wanted to hang on it. Um, let me know what you think because this is a new style of video for me. I usually sit down in my comfy chair, my sewing chair, but today I thought it might be fun to hang up these things on this rack um, when I'm drinking. So I am still ordering and receiving tea from Tea by Claire or Tea by C. And if you want to place an order with them, I have a discount code. It is so and sip, and I believe you get $5 off your first order. I'm drinking the Kenyan Earl Grey, which is my favorite. I've actually ordered it again um, because I tend to keep reaching for it and I just find it to be extremely delicious. So um, if you'd like to try this tea, I highly recommend it. Um, and I have two companies I wanna share with you, uh, both of them are body related products one is a skincare product and the other one is actually for your hair now i'm going to talk about the skincare product first this right here is the brown sugar and coffee foaming scrub i actually received this from my sister as a gift it is probably one of my favorite gifts that she's ever given me i am a person that loves to take care of my skin i love to exfoliate and just have really smooth nice skin so um I definitely have quite the collection of body scrubs, but this one is actually moving its way up to fa my favorites because this actually is not as harsh as some of my other body scrubs. Some of them I find they just are so abrasive and it actually doesn't feel very good when you're rubbing it into the skin. But this right here, it's like a finer, um, scrub and when you're rubbing it in it actually starts to turn into a lather so it's almost like a soap it's organic all natural ingredients in this guy cruelty free and it is a homemade product and the company is called pam organics and she has a business on instagram and she has so many wonderful handmade soaps and body butters and scrubs all kinds of really lovely things i think she even has candles so if you love candles I definitely think you should check her out. I will put her Instagram handle in the information section below and also her email address because you have to order through her email. I think that's how it works. Um, this particular product is actually good for body and face. I love it because it smells like coffee. I love the smell of coffee, um, but it also reminds me a bit of not just brown sugar, but chocolate. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I definitely feel like I'm getting a treat when I rub this into my body. Um, I do want to let you know that it is a bit messy. It can get all over the shower, but you can easily rinse it away when you're finished showering. Um, but it's worth it for the way that it makes my skin feel. My skin is just so soft and smooth 
and it just feels so great. Now the company is owned by Pam, who is a woman, and I highly recommend that you support her. You know I love to shout out women-owned businesses, and I want to see all our women-owned businesses be successful. So if you love taking care of your skin and skincare products, body scrubs, this is definitely one that I think you should try. And there's other scents as well that she has that are just probably just as great. I just particularly am enjoying this one. All right, so the next thing I wanna share with you is actually a hair product. If you don't know, my hair is actually naturally curly and I braid it and air dry it and sometimes blow dry it to get it to be more stretched and voluminous. I mostly wear my hair braided and twisted throughout my week and I use lots of hair oils. I love hair oils. I have quite the collection, um, but this is a new one to me that I'm just in love with, okay? I'm enjoying it so much. And actually, if you are a Sephora VIB, VIB Rouge, you definitely want to try to get this now because you can get it for up to 20% off depending on what tier you're at. Um, admittedly, I'm VIP Rouge, which I wish I wasn't VIP Rouge because it means that I spend too much money there. But I have seven sisters that I shop for. I shop for both my mom, my mother-in-law, aunties. And so it's not just all spent on me. There's birthdays and Christmases that I'm also shopping through Sephora for. And this is going to be probably one of my favorite oils. I'm definitely gonna repurchase this. This guy is actually made by a company called Bread Beauty Supply. And this is a black owned hair company and they specialize in products for curly, coily, and kinkier textures of hair. Guys, when I put this on my hair after I blow dry it, it just makes my hair so soft and sleek and it's not super heavy or greasy it's just the perfect weight and my hair just melts into softness i don't know that's the best way that i can describe it but as a person who has quite a collection of hair oils i can tell you that this is definitely a good one another thing that i love about it is just the sleek bottle it looks very expensive like maybe perfume um, it's glass and it has this really cute top on it. It looks really great on the countertop in the bathroom. I have so many products and I try to put most of them away, but the things that I use every single day, I will keep out on my counter. This is going to be one of them, partly because it's beautiful. <laughs> um, also, it smells kind of like candy. So it's a bit of a sweet smell. If you're not into sweet smelling oils, then you may not like this as much, but I think it's fantastic. So please, check out this business. Please check out these hair products. You can get them at Sephora or from their website. Both will be linked down below in the information section. Okay, friends, that's it. That's all the things that I wanted to share with you that were not sewing related. See, that wasn't too long. All right, we're gonna go into the things that I made. Now, I want to share with you the things that I made in order by my notes here on my paper and not in order by how they're hanging on the rack. Sorry about that. I just wanna keep myself straight on the details and things that I wanted to share with you. Some of these things have been made almost more than two months ago. So I have forgotten a little bit about the details. So I wanted to make sure I had my notes. I also wanna share some sewing fails and struggles that I had in making some of these garments. I think it's important to be transparent and share that sometimes we mess up, right? And then also it gives you an opportunity to please help me give me advice on how I can fix some of my little fails or it helps me to prevent you from making the same mistakes. So hopefully that is enjoyable and helpful to you. So the first thing that I wanna share with you is actually something that I pattern tested back in December before Christmas. Tilly and the Buttons just came out with a pattern called Lyra and Lyra is a button up dress and it is so romantic and gorgeous. I made two versions and I think I actually may have sneakingly <laughs> wore them in a couple of my videos that were not related to sewing. So if you don't watch those videos and you probably haven't seen these dresses, but if you do watch those videos, this is what I was wearing. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna talk to you about the first one, which is actually, uh, it's so romantic, probably one of the most romantic things that I've ever made. Now, this version is actually the full length version. I'm going to show you the dress on the hanger, but then I'll also insert pictures of me wearing the dress. If you're friends with me on Instagram, then there is a good chance that you've seen these pictures already. But this is Lyra. Lyra has buttons down the bodice of the dress and there are in this version, one, two, three, four, five buttons. 
It has an elasticated wrist. It has two, a two-tiered skirt. You can see that. I have made this out of a cotton wool that I got from fabric.com. I absolutely love this type of fabric. Cotton wool is now one of my favorites. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but I'm saying it the way I'm saying it. <laughs> and I just love the way it flows, how lightweight and soft and drapey it is. It's definitely like the silk of cotton, if that makes sense. Um, but it's very drapey and fluttery and gorgeous. I love this dress so much. A bit about the pattern. I want to say that this is definitely a um, intermediate type of pattern. If you're looking to challenge yourself, if you've never done a button up shirt before or created a collar, Tilling the buttons holds your hand all the way through with the instructions. I believe they have a sew along for this right now. When I tested it, there was not a sewing um, tutorial on this particular dress, but there is one now, I believe. This dress also has pockets, guys. And while with a lightweight fabric like this, you really don't wanna put anything that's too heavy in the pockets, but it's nice, deep pockets. You can put your chapstick. For me, I always keep an inhaler in my pocket. Um, and it's just so gorgeous and I just loved making this so much. It is a big project because you are doing a button placket, a collar, and you're doing a two-tiered skirt which has gathers. So it's definitely not a project that you can whip up in an hour or two. It's definitely going to take, if you're not a person that likes to power through a day of sewing, then it's going to take a few days, a couple hours at a time until you complete it. If you're a fast sewist, then you may not have any issues with knocking this out pretty quickly. Um, I always, because I get so excited, I tend to power through my projects and see them to the end. For example, this dress that I'm wearing right now, which is the Seymour Thinning dress. I made it last night and I finished it at one in the morning. I'm just like that. Um, but I get compulsive and I can't sleep if I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> so this was the first version that I made. I absolutely love it. It's perfect for spring and summer. And again, I got this fabric from fabric.com. The next version that I made is actually a denim chambray. It's a bit of a heavier weight fabric because it is a denim. It has these really gorgeous embroidered roses on it as well as these awesome gingham pink buttons. I love these buttons so very much. I found them on Etsy. Um, this dress is perfect for me. I actually wore it in the cold months with tights and now I plan to wear it without tights now that it's spring and we're going into summer and I can definitely still wear it in the summer since it's not a heavyweight denim. This is actually one of my favorite things that I've ever made because I feel like it just screams my personality. <laughs> some things do that again we have the elasticated wrist and we have the belt tie we have the collar the button placket um, but this only has the one skirt it doesn't have the two-tiered skirt so it's a little bit quicker of a sew but I will say that um, with this guy since I had already done this one and the anxiety and excitement was over <laughs> And I knew what I was doing. I did take my time with this one. So I made the bodice one day and I made the skirt the next day. But it definitely was an enjoyable sew. I absolutely love this fabric. I plan to buy more of it because I have so many ideas <laughs> for this fabric. And I am one of those people that I will make several things out of one pattern of fabric. I have no issue with that whatsoever. But I just think it's so gorgeous. And it's so me. So this was the second version. Again, I highly recommend this pattern. If you're a beginning sewist and you'd like to try this pattern, I don't wanna discourage you from trying it, but I do wanna let you know that it might be a bit more challenging. However, as I mentioned before, tilling the buttons patterns are so amazingly written and easy to follow. And a lot of times they will have a blog post or a tutorial to help you sew through the steps. So this is a really great pattern, guys, and I highly suggest that you check it out. All right, so the next thing on my list is the Berta Easy Turtleneck. Now, I have received Berta Easy magazines for an entire year last year. And guys, I hadn't sewn any of them last year. I love sewing magazines. I actually have a couple of coming soon that I can't wait to share with you but I get them and I just get them to like look at and just drool over and I actually wasn't sewing the patterns. 
So I canceled my subscription to Berta Easy so that I could sew as many of the things from last year's issues as I could before I renew my subscription. One of the things I wanted to make before it was too hot is one of their turtleneck sweaters. Now, the best thing about Berta Easy that I can say um, comparing it to other sewing magazines would be that you actually don't have to trace over multiple patterns. So far, each of my patterns have been on their own sheet of paper. They're not layered and they've been really easy to follow. Someone's cutting the grass, guys. So if you can hear it, I'm so very sorry that you can hear that. Please try to ignore it. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I really enjoy sewing with their patterns because you don't have to trace over them. I will say that one of the things that I'm disappointed about is their size range. I am the largest size um, that they have in this particular magazine. And I've shared my measurements before, but um, it's 38, 33, it varies, <laughs> 32, 33 um, to 40 full hip. So those are my measurements and I'm the biggest size in the magazine. Um, so what makes it easy for me is that I can, I know automatically I can just cut the biggest size and I don't have to, um, guess about my size, but it's not as inclusive as it should be in order to accommodate other people that like to sew their patterns. All of their patterns are super easy to follow. And I thoroughly enjoyed sewing the things that I made from the magazine so far. This was one of them. It's gorgeous. This is a double brush poly that I got from girl Charlie. I'll insert pictures of me wearing this and it is so soft. Double brush poly, if you didn't know, is one of my absolute favorite fabrics to sew with. It's just so soft and comfortable to wear. So this one has a really thick drapey collar, which I love. I have made turtlenecks before that were very tight around the neck and I don't like that feeling. I feel like I'm being choked and I have asthma. And so if I'm having an asthma flare up and I have on something like that, it is completely uncomfortable for me. So I really love the way this neck drapes. It's almost like a, I think it's called a cow neck. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I love the way it drapes and the way it fits. I do plan to make more of these. Um, I want to make some in a lighter weight fabric that I can wear right now during spring. As I mentioned in other videos, I live in the Bay Area of California. It doesn't get super, super hot. And we get like a handful of hot days a year. Um, but I could wear something like this all the way through spring and then early fall as well. So I'm really excited about this particular make. It was super easy. One of the things I like about it is that it has a curve in it. It's hard to tell me holding it up, but in the pictures you might be able to see a little bit better. So it curves in at the waist, which makes it extremely flattering. It's not really boxy. So this was a really great pattern. And if you're new to sewing, I highly recommend Berta Easy magazines. The next thing that I made on my list is the Westcliff dress by Friday Pattern Company. Now, I love this dress so much, and I'm going to tell you my favorite thing about it. Um, my favorite thing about this particular dress, the tie is on the neck right now, um, is the waist, right? I like the idea of a wrap dress, but friends, I don't like a wrap dress where when you sit down, it falls open and oops, you showed your panties or too much thigh. <laughs> I'm a little bit more conservative. If I was going out on a date night with my husband or you know, back when I was younger, I probably wouldn't care as much. But now that I'm older, I just feel a little bit more self-conscious about having all my business out there. So what I love about this is that it's just a wrap style in the bodice. The, another thing that I love about this pattern is that it comes in cup sizes and I was able to sew the D cup for my dress and it fit me so perfectly in the bus. I can bend over, I can pick things up, and I don't show any cleavage. It's just so flattering and so comfortable. I don't have to be self-conscious about wearing it at all. And I just love the way it came out so much. Now, this was one of my first projects using lots of stripes, and I had the opportunity to play with my stripes and do a lot of stripe matching. So I do wanna point out some of those details for you right now. So right up here, we have some gathers at the top of the bust area. And I think that's so cute. I did my best to line up my lines as much as possible. I wanted to play with stripes in as far as their directions. So this is going this direction, this is going this direction. On the sides, I lined up 
the fabric so that it would create this awesome design on the side. And that was a lot of fun to do. This is a pattern that requires a lot of fabric. So definitely read the fabric requirements before you get started on your project to make sure that you have enough. Um, so it has this main skirt piece here and it also has a lower tier. And as you can see, the direction of my lower tier matches the bodice of my dress. Uh, I love it so much. And the sleeves are also matching this direction. This particular fabric is one of my favorites. Next to Double Brush Poly, my next favorite fabric is actually the Lyocell jersey from Joann's. It's just so lightweight and breathable. It's so comfortable to wear. It's so soft on the skin. Um, it's a bit like a modal fabric, only it's thinner, I would say. Um, I will say one thing though. This is the second time. Oh, I can show you. So here's the waist tie that goes around it and you'll see it in the pictures, but I just kind of hang it up like this. One of the things that I do not like about this particular type of fabric is that this is the second time that I purchased one that has black in it and both fabrics faded terribly after the first wash. So I'm not happy about that and I'll get a little closer. Maybe you can see in the pictures, but the blacks are just not as black as it was when I first purchased the fabric and washed it the first time. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you're going to buy some Lyocell jersey fabric from Joann's, you might want to steer clear of black or navy blue because they do not tend to hold the color even when you follow the washing instructions of the fabric. But it is so soft and so comfortable. I definitely want to make more of this dress because the bodice is just so flattering and comfortable. I love it so much. The only thing is it's extremely long. As a person that's only 5'4", <laughs> I had to take a lot of length out of this bottom skirt of the dress. Um, when I make it again, I will take the length from the middle skirt, um, but it is just such a lovely dress. So I highly recommend this one. If you have never tried a Friday Pattern Company pattern before, I do wanna let you know that they are a wonderful, wonderful beginner-friendly pattern company. All of the instructions are just written so nice and clear. The pictures are really clear and easy to follow. Um, so this is definitely a dress pattern that you can't go wrong with it. And I just love it. All right, so the next thing that I wanna share with you is my Vogue Easy V9299 blouse. Now, this particular blouse, friends, I made, and I was so proud of it, posted pictures on Instagram and it's a little crumpled right now. I'm sorry about that. I did iron all of my things before hanging them in my closet, but you know, when something's been in your closet for a few days and you have a lot of things in there, it can cause some bunching and it will make you have some wrinkles. I definitely need to work on my closet friends. It's getting a little out of hand. Anyways, I love this blouse so much. It's very flirty and girly. I've used a cotton ball again, <laughs> that I got from fabric.com. Please forgive this little string, it's for the ceiling fan. So this is my blouse, it's gorgeous. It's lightweight, it's soft. This is another cotton wall that I purchased from fabric.com and it has these really great little flowers on it. It kind of actually reminds me of like cranberries, uh, but I just love this blouse so much. It's perfect for spring and summer. I love that it has this awesome belled sleeve with an elasticated wrist. It has a really wonderful collar. I do wanna say that although it is a Vogue easy pattern, if you've never made a collar shirt before, I will say that it's probably not the easiest collar uh, pattern to follow. I have personally made several collars at this point, um, so I can kind of compare the instructions and I will say that I have found easier patterns to follow, but once you get the pattern down, it's just a lovely, lovely blouse. So nice. I'm especially proud of this blouse because when I posted pictures of this blouse on Instagram, McCall Patterns actually asked me if they could repost this blouse on their page and they did. And that was so exciting for a, another pattern company to share one of the things that I've made. So if this has happened to you before, you can identify with the excitement that I had when I saw my version of my blouse on their site. But this is definitely a lovely blouse. I love that it has kind of like a high front, low back. It's really roomy and 
I think that I like it best tucked into jeans, but I also think that it looks nice, loose, and flowy. This is what the back looks like. Please forgive the wrinkles. This has been hanging in my closet for a few days since I've ironed it. Um, so anyway, I just think it's a really lovely, lightweight top. Okay, friends, so the next thing that I made is the McCall M7925. Now, this is a multi-tiered, beautiful button-up dress. I changed mine up a bit. I wanted to do something completely different than what the pattern envelope looked like. And so I chose to use a really beautiful African print fabric. This fabric was given to me by my aunt last year. And I just love it so much. It has so many designs on it. And I wanted to find a way to incorporate every single pattern and print on this fabric in this dress. Now, this particular pattern has several sleeve options, but I chose to do this short sleeve, which is kind of like a ruffle. I love it so much. It's so dramatic, so flirty. And I just think that it lends itself really well to this beautiful African fabric. Now, in a lot of the versions that I've seen of this dress, people have used some really beautiful shirting fabrics and it looks light and airy and yes, elegant, but also that you could wear it to work or out to brunch or whatever. But mine using this fabric ended up being a more of a, hmm, it looks a little bit more festive. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. Now the colors and the fabric itself scream me, okay? They're definitely bold and bright and gorgeous. However, um, it's pretty formal looking in my opinion. So it's not something that I would wear every day, but I'm so proud of the way it came out and I just love it so much. A couple of things that I did that are different than the pattern instructions is that I added snaps instead of buttons because I had these really gorgeous snaps and the yellow buttons I ordered actually didn't match perfectly like these do. And I loved that I chose to do this because the roundness and the color of the actual snaps is perfect to the pattern on the fabric. I just think it looks so gorgeous. Um, another thing that I did is that I chose to cut the collar on the bias and I stretched it on purpose. This is the second time I've done this because I just really love the way it looks and it created kind of like a ruffly neck band and I just love it. It's just so unique. I haven't seen anyone make this dress like I've made it or in this African fabric. Now, one of the things that I love about sewing is that you can be as creative as you want. I took a basic pattern and I transformed it into something that I find is just unique, special, and beautiful to me. I won't see anyone walking down the street wearing this particular dress, and I'm really proud about that. Um, one thing I wanna say about this dress is that it did take a very long time. This dress, because of all the layers, took me seven hours to make, which is a really long time to spend on one sewing project, um, but and that doesn't even incorporate the time that I spent cutting the fabric and matching all of the pieces like this waistband piece and all the different skirt pieces. It has lots of pieces, this guy does. But it took a really long time to cut the fabric and then it took seven hours to sew the dress. So this is definitely a labor of love. I do wish I had sized up. I actually purchased a pattern and the maximum size on that pattern was a 14. But I think that in the bust area, I could have done with a either a full bust adjustment or I could have probably even gone up to a size 16. But I do love the way it came out and I have enjoyed it so much. I wish I had a special occasion just so that I could wear this. But so far, I've spent a lot of time in the house. <laughs> but this is probably one of my favorite things that I've ever made. And actually, I was featured in Black Makers Matter on Instagram. And this was one of the dresses that I featured um, in my post for that, as well as my Westcliff dress. And I just felt really proud about the work and the love that went into creating this dress. Okay, so the next thing that I made was the Friday Pattern Company Wilder Gown. Now, friends. This is something that I had wanted to make for so long and I couldn't decide on the fabric that I wanted to use. It was so hard for me to choose, but I finally decided, you know what? I'm gonna think outside of the box. I'm gonna pick a color combination, pattern combination that I haven't seen anyone do before and I'm just gonna go for it. 
Have you ever done that where you planned to be so unique and different and then it failed? <laughs> that is what happened to me. It was a little bit too much, okay? Now, I love bright, beautiful colors. And so that is where I started. I knew I wanted to use hot pink, right? I also knew I wanted to use a vol fabric because as I mentioned before, it's one of my new favorite types of fabric to sew with. So I found this hot pink vol fabric on fabric.com. And then I found this floral fabric, which has lots of different shades of pink and yellow and blue. And I was like, I'm going to mash them up. I'm going to do some color blocking. And I hadn't seen anyone else at the time do this on Instagram. So I was going to be the first one. And I was excited about it. <laughs> and on paper, when I sketched it and painted it, it looked beautiful. It looked so perfect. It was everything I wanted. So I went ahead with my sewing plans. And then once I made it and put it on my body, I realized I did not like it. I felt like it was too busy. Um, some things that I did to change the pattern is I lengthened the sleeves and I added an, an elasticated wrist. I also added elastic here at the waistband. I had seen a couple of people, I think Secret Life of a Seamstress, who's also on YouTube and Instagram. She's amazing if you haven't checked out her channel. Uh, I think it was her channel where I saw that she had done that. And I was like, what a great idea. I'm totally gonna copy you. So I tried it because I was afraid that the dress might look tent-like on me and I needed something to try to draw it in a bit um, under the bust. So that was my thought. The other thing I did is I added um, the, this wall fabric for the tie when I really wish I would have used a soft satin fabric to create the tie because it would be less stiff and structured and more soft and pliable. And I, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it would have laid a little bit softer on the fabric um, I find that using this cotton fabric, it is a little bit more boxy than what I wanted, um, especially with regards to the tie. I also find that the, when gathering it at the neckline, it isn't as fluttery and soft the way it lays. It's more structured and that is not a look I was going for. So I was a little disappointed about how that came out. Now I did do the bottom tier in this lovely floral fabric as well. And I don't know, on the hanger, it doesn't look that bad, right? But on my body, I kind of felt like it wasn't as flattering, okay? I kind of felt like it didn't match my personality. And even in the pictures that I posted, although I was trying to be a model <laughs> and I didn't want to be cheesing in all my pictures, people said that I looked like I was frowning or unhappy in those pictures. So it didn't spark joy when I wore it. And um, I'm trying to figure out how I can change it so that I will actually enjoy wearing it. I haven't worn it since I made it, you guys. And I don't want that to be the case. I definitely wanna wear it this spring um, because it's so lightweight and soft and drapey. Um, but I think, and you guys can tell me what you think. I think I'd like to make it a short sleeve top rather than a long sleeve top. And I think I actually might wanna remove this bottom tier so that it's just a short, dress and it only has the floral on the front and the back of the bodice rather than the tear down here. I don't know guys, what do you think? Is this worth saving? Should I wear it the way it is? Should I hack it? Should I change it up? Let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm proud that I followed through on one of my sewing plans with regards to this vision that I had for this dress. I'm just not happy about the way I felt when I looked at myself in the dress. Um, and it was funny because I had some very unanimous feelings from people in my family about how it looked on me. <laughs> so it made it even harder for me to wear it. I do want to say that I have paired this with a jean jacket and that looks really cute. I have paired this with a leather jacket and that looked really cute, but on its own, I haven't enjoyed it yet. I mean, it's not a complete loss. I think I'll try again. <laughs> but um, the actual pattern is a lovely pattern to sew. I do plan to make the blouse pretty soon here. Um, and it's a very easy pattern to follow. Definitely beginner friendly. Again, the instructions are written so well. So anyways, this is the Wilder gown. The next thing that I made on my list 
was a successful thing, thing uh, something that I was super proud that I made. I love, love, love it so much. But today, friends, I broke it and I'm crushed. <laughs> and I need some advice on how I can fix what I've broken. Okay, so in February, we received a bomber jacket pattern and fabric for a bomber jacket. I love bomber jackets. They're my absolute favorite type of jacket to wear. And I was thrilled to make it. I was so proud of how it came out. It was so gorgeous. I'll insert pictures. But today, I was really quickly getting my things together for this video. And I put the jacket on a hanger and I aggressively zipped it all the way to the top. Right? I'm going to get up close so I can show you. I aggressively zipped it all the way to the top. And now it's not only is it stuck, but I think it's actually starting to rip and I can't get it to zip back down. I'm heartbroken. I love this bomber jacket so much. I've worn it so many times since I wore it. It is perfect weight for spring. It has this amazing rainbow zipper. And what you can't see on the inside, and I'll insert pictures, is that it has this amazing candy colored lining. Oh, I love it so much and I'm so sad that I've broken the zipper and now I can't wear it until I fix it that is and I need some help because I don't know what to do and I try to get my husband to help me pull the zipper down and he was like I'm scared I'm gonna break it so <laughs> help friends I really want to wear this this is a Ponte fabric that was included in the crate it's gorgeous it's a really nice weight of Ponte um, it's just so pretty I've watched it a couple of times it has not faded um, and it has these awesome welt pockets, friends. It was my first time making welt pockets. They came out beautiful. I was so proud of myself. Um, this is so gorgeous. I ended up using a, a ribbing fabric for the collar and for the wrist cuff. Um, but otherwise, I used the Ponte for this bottom band as well as the entire outer. The lining on the inside is a double knit doodle fabric from Joann's. And I just love this bomber jacket so much. So please help me figure out how I can get this zipper down without completely breaking it. This is totally my fault because I bought zipper stop clamps and I don't know how to use them. And so I was like, oh, I'll add the clamps later. And then I never got around to adding them to the jacket. And here I am aggressively zipping it up and breaking it i'm so sad friends please help me um but that was one of my favorite things that i've ever made so please help <laughs> all right the next thing that i made is a berta easy t-shirt dress and it's actually made out of this amazing rainbow fabric now the neckline looks a little bit crazy right now so please forgive that it looks much better when it's actually on my body now the pictures that I took wearing this dress, it was a work day and I wasn't planning on taking any pictures. Um, so I'm not like styled really super cute, but at least you can see what it looks like on. This amazing doodle fabric I actually got from Joann's. It was in the juvenile section and I love it so much. It is a heavier weight double knit fabric and it's gray and it's speckled and then has these amazing rainbows all over it. This is definitely my style of things that I like to wear when I'm working with the kids. Um, and it's so comfortable and it was perfect with tights. So again, with Berta Easy, their patterns are super simple. This actually only had four pieces to it, no neck band. This is just folded down um, and it's just such a great little dress. So again, Berta Easy, the easy, easy pattern. All right, I made another Berta Easy dress. This one I like a little bit better. Um, I do wish I had sized down though, because as I mentioned in the Berta Easy magazine, I am the largest size, but I think I could have afforded two size down, one size, um, because this is a dress that has curves built into it. And um, because of the size that it is, it doesn't really hug any curve that I have. I'm not really curvy anyway, but I think that I has a little bit too much room in the hip. And you'll be able to see that in the pictures as well. Again, another day I wasn't planning on having my picture taken and I was actually doing recess duty and my husband took a picture for me. He ran outside and took a picture for me. Um, 
This is a double brush poly fabric that I purchased from Girl Charlie. It's so gorgeous. Look at that. It's so gorgeous and it's so soft and comfortable. This is actually a lighter weight double brush poly. Most double brush polys, if you don't know, are a heavier weight knit. They can be very warm in the summertime, um, but this one's actually pretty lightweight and soft and gorgeous. Again, a super easy um, pattern to follow. I will say that I did something that I don't normally do. I wanted to use up some of my hemming tape. So I was like, I never use this stuff. I should start using it. So in my mind, I was going to do the hemming tape just to hold the neckband down. Again, this pattern doesn't have a separate neckband. You just roll down the bodice neck hole. You just fold it down and, and then sew it down. Um, but anyway, I decided to use the hemming tape first and then do the twin needle. And it looks fine. But then I forgot to go back and do the wrist. And when I washed the dress, as you can see, the hem tape has separated. That's totally my fault. I intended to go back with the twin needle like I did for the neckline and do the wrist cuffs and totally forgot. I, I managed to remember to do the hem and the neckband or the neckline, but I forgot to do the wrist. I don't know how I forgot to do the wrist. Anyway, so it's something I can quickly go back and fix. But this is, again, another simple, easy dress with only four pattern pieces. Really lovely. I love a good t-shirt dress. Okay, so the next thing that I made is actually I pattern tested for Pattern Scout. This is my first time pattern testing with this particular company. It was amazing, you guys. It was so fun. And let me tell you why. When you pattern test with companies, oftentimes they send you information about the pattern. They send you the pattern instructions and the pattern, but you don't actually get the community aspect. You don't know who else is testing the pattern. You can't share notes and help each other or, you know, just kind of like, communicate about your experience with the pattern or share your versions of the pattern with each other. It's all a secret, right? But the cool thing is with Pattern Scout, they actually use an amazing app where the community can communicate with each other about the things that they've made, share pictures with each other, give each other advice for fitting, which is amazing. Um, it creates a little community. I actually met some Bay Area sewists that way and it was so fun. I don't actually know a lot of people that sew in real life like just through youtube and instagram not like locally um so it was really fun to be able to meet some new people that love to sew as well and give each other advice or just encourage each other um pump each other up when you, they completed items so that was so much fun um also it was just a really nice company to work with period so i pattern tested their new pattern which is the comfy set and they have a really great long sleeve shirt right and then there's these amazing pants i will tell you that this was my first test run that i did i've made several of these now and it's a bit long i am going to go back and change some things about it but i always like to make a pattern exactly the way it's written the first time i'm checking my time make sure i'm not going over my time i like to make a pattern the exact way that it's written with the sizes that are appropriate for me without making too many adjustments the first time I make it. And then the second time I make it, I change all the fitting things for myself so that it fits perfectly, right? So for this one, I followed the instructions exactly. And the sleeves were too long, you'll be able to see in the pictures. And the bodice is too long. Um, but I love the neckline. It's probably one of my favorite scoop necklines that I've ever made. Um, also, I wanna say that the shoulders are a bit big. I actually ended up making it again in a size smaller. Um, I love that this pattern has cup sizes. I'm a huge fan of a pattern that has cup sizes. So I did make a, a D cup for this. And it comes with these ama amazing pants. Now these pants are so comfortable. I made this out using um, modal fabric that I received in thread crate. Now I will say this about the waistband. I thought I had two inch elastic, which is what you need for the pattern in my stash, but I ended up having an inch and a half. So what happened is the waistband is a little bit um, ruffly. <laughs> There's extra loose fabric, um, but that's okay because I sleep in these. No one's actually going to see it. Um, this one has some really nice pockets on the inside and you'll be able to see this modeled in the pictures. They're so comfortable and soft. Now, 
this pattern I believe is drafted for someone that's 5'8 and I'm 5'4 so I did have to take a lot of length off of the legs um, which is not an issue I usually have to do that but I really enjoyed making this set is definitely a beginner friendly pattern one thing I like about this oh before I put these away one thing I like about these pants a lot is that the waistband is actually attached to the elastic now the first time I did it I had trouble with my machine my machine actually broke two needles and i was like what is going on because it did not like sewing through thick elastic the type of needle that i was using it was a stretch needle but it did not like sewing through the thick elastic so i did break two needles the first time um but i did go for a, a slightly thicker needle when i did my next versions and i have made a couple versions because i love this pattern so much so I made this one and I sized down and this one is actually made out of a double brush poly. You know, I love it. And it's a cream color. And then for the sleeves and the neckband, I've used a French Terry fabric. This French Terry is so lightweight and soft. It's from Girl Charlie. A lot of my knitwear is from Girl Charlie. I love Girl Charlie. Um, but the sleeves were so easy to put in with this particular fabric. At first I was nervous because they do feel different. The, the double brush poly is a heavier, thicker fabric. This ter French terry is very soft and light, so I wasn't sure how well they would play together, but they actually worked really great together. And I love the contrast in neckband. Now, the only thing that's different from this version to this version is that it is short sleeved and I went down a size. It's still a D cup. Um, and I just love it so much. It's finished with a twin needle at the neckband. I did not finish um the hem of the sleeves or the bottom because you guys i love my rainbow threads so i like to show off my rainbow threads in patterns that will lend itself nicely for that so i did choose to leave that the way it is um and then instead of making the pants i made shorts and these are out of the french terry they're so soft and lightweight and comfortable and they have the nice pockets I love this set so much. I'm actually sleeping in it a lot lately, but it's something that I would definitely wear out. Um, and this was probably my favorite version. I did make another version, a tie-tie version um, for the shorts. And I'll insert pictures. When I went to get my things ready for this video, I couldn't find them, which means they're probably in the dirty clothes hamper. Um, but for these and for that pair, instead of sewing the elastic to the waistband, I actually created a waistband casing and fed the elastic through. I personally think that that's just an easier way to, um, create an elastic waist. Also, my machine was giving me a hard time with sewing the elastic to the waistband. Now I have mentioned this already, but I did make another version where I sewed the elastic to the waistband and it was fine, um, but I just think it was a little bit easier of a process. So that's why I did it for these shorts, but I love them. They're so comfortable. They're so perfect for spring and summer. All right, so next I made the Friday Pattern Company Square Neck Top. Now, if you've been watching my videos, when I did my Mexican fabric haul, this was one of the fabrics that was in that haul, I mentioned that I really want to make a Tijuana inspired dress. And if you've never seen one of those dresses before, they often will have a deep scoop neck or a square necked blouse on the top. And then the bottom is a full skirt with a lace ruffle at the bottom. Now I've been on the hunt for the perfect square neck top because they're boxy looking top. Um, so this was a test run to see if I liked the pattern. Now, Friday Pattern Company usually knocks it all apart for me, but I had some fit issues with this guy. This is a D cup top. I made it in a size large, which I almost always do make a size large based off of my measurements. But I found that in doing this in a size large with a D cup, it's massive. I'll insert pictures so that you can see what it looks like on. This was a fabric that I wasn't completely attached to. I actually purchased this from Joann's last summer, I believe. And it is a cotton fabric. It's got this herringbone type of print on it. I think that's what it's called, herringbone. And it's heavier weight fabric, so it's perfect for fall winter i'm gonna wear it during the spring 
Um, and I actually plan to make some paper waste bag pants to wear with this in the same fabric and maybe tuck it in. Um, but it's just too big. So what I'm going to do is I definitely want to keep the D cup, but I will probably sell size down two sizes. I don't know. I'm, I'm still thinking about it because also another thing I don't like, I think I'm going to have to adjust where the bust starts are because the bust starts are under my bust. And I looked at the examples and some of the examples that I've seen are people, other people that made it. It's the same position on them, but I don't like the way that looks on me. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out, do I keep this D cup and go down in the size in the top or do I not sew a D cup and keep a size large? I don't know guys, I'm thinking about it, but I gotta figure it out. I really want to make a white blouse to go with my Tijuana dress in this pattern, um, but I don't wanna mess up my nice fabric. So I'm really trying to figure this out before I make my final version. So if you have advice, let me know. If you've made this and you made some adjustments to the fit and were, you're also busty, let me know that too. The next thing that I made is a Seamark Adelaide dress. And I have actually changed this up a bit from the original version. And the reason why is because I only had two yards of fabric. I was so disappointed that I couldn't squeeze this dress out of two yards. I just knew I was gonna be able to, and I wasn't. Um, this particular dress is again, another favorite item of mine. It's something that I definitely plan to wear all spring and summer. And I made it out of this gorgeous Mexican fabric that I got from Nice Cosas. And it has Frida all over it. It's just so beautiful. I'll insert pictures so that you can see what it looks like up close. I just love this fabric so much. It's just such a nice, beautiful fabric. I used wooden buttons that are just so perfect for this. And it was a very easy sew, but you do use bias binding for the neck and armholes. Um, so if you haven't done that before, then that might be something that's going to take a little bit more time for you. But otherwise, it's a pretty easy pattern to follow. And I just love this dress so much. Because I didn't have enough fabric, I shortened it by like five inches or so, um, just so that I could squeeze out the dress. Um, but I do want to make this pattern again in enough fabric. I'll buy more fabric to make sure that I have enough to cover it because it's a great summer staple, I think. And I've actually worn this with a long sleeve underneath, with a turtleneck underneath, and with leggings. So I am definitely getting my wear out of this, and I'm so happy that I made it. The last thing that I made was a t-shirt from a new company that I just discovered called Pattern Scissor Cloth. And this was actually a free t-shirt pattern. I had never heard of this company before, but a lot of people were participating in Frugal Frocks challenge and a couple of people made this shirt and I was like oh my gosh that's such a great little shirt so this is the shirt I don't have any pictures of myself wearing it I'm so sorry guys but um, I have worn it quite a bit I did change the pattern one thing about it so this particular pattern is a crew neck so it comes up really high up here on the neck and you guys know I don't like having anything that's tight around my neck so I did create a larger neckband for this guy and I love the way it came out. I loved this balloon sleeve here. It's such a beautiful detail. I love this really thick arm cuff band here. And this particular fabric is actually a rayon jersey that I purchased from Girl Charlie. It's so gorgeous, so soft on the skin. I have lots of this fabric, so I hope to make a dress out of it sometime soon. I did use my rainbow thread for the serging and it was just an easy, fun pattern. And again, it was free. And I plan to make this in black and white because I think these are really good staples. And because statement sleeves are in, this little cute balloon sleeve is gonna be perfect for all of my skirts and jean outfits and my overalls. So I really love the way this came out. As a bonus, guys, when I was getting my things together, I realized that there is a skirt that I've never showed on my channel. This is a self-drafted skirt that I made out of beautiful African wax print fabric. It's just a straight pencil skirt, but I self-drafted it and I wore it only a couple times because I made it at the end of last summer and it was just too cold for me to wear it. But now with spring coming and summer coming, I'm going to be wearing it a lot. It hits me right at the knee 
and it is a bit high-waisted. I just love this so much and I can't believe that I've never shown it on my channel. I made my husband and my children shorts out of this fabric and I had just enough left to squeeze myself a little pencil skirt. It has elasticated waist and it's perfect. All right, guys, those are all the things that I made in February and in March. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed seeing the clothing hanging and up close, please do let me know. If you prefer the other style of video where I typically just show pictures, let me know that as well. Um, but I just thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right, thank you so much and have a wonderful week.